I know for a fact that this video might be a little bit controversial with some folks because again, some people get like super defensive about hammocks. What's up everybody? This video is going to be about hammocks, right? So there seems to be like a lot of like hype and rave around hammock camping right now. There's literally an entire website just dedicated to boomers arguing about different hammock stuff like People love their freaking hammocks, and I'm here to talk about some of the downsides to sleeping in hammocks. I wanna be clear, this is not gonna be a why tents are better than hammocks video. That's not what I'm doing here. In fact, I even use a hammock 95% of the time. When I'm backpacking, I did the entire Appalachian Trail in a hammock. I did the entire Long Trail in a hammock. I have a lot of experience sleeping in a hammock. I'm not just some clown who like got drunk one time, slept in a hammock, and then decided the next morning that hammocks of all different types are just terrible. No, I... <laughs> there are certainly a lot of good things about hammocks and I'm probably gonna make another video on that sometime, but there are also a lot of things that are not so great about sleeping in hammocks, and I've kind of come to realize what those things are over the years just from sleeping in my hammock so much. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Maybe you're thinking about switching your system from a tent to a hammock, or maybe you are a beginner backpacker who's kind of weighing the options and trying to figure out what you wanna do. Either way, hopefully this will be helpful and you should definitely leave a comment and let me know if you think this video is bullshit, if you are like a dedicated, like diehard hammock hanger person, or yeah, if you just found any of this stuff helpful. With that said, let's get into reason number one why sleeping in a hammock sucks. So this reason is gonna be that once you're actually like laying down in the hammock, there's really not that much like space and room to kind of move around and do anything besides just lay there. So for instance, on my Appalachian Trail through hike, I found that once I was actually inside of my hammock, it was very, very difficult to master. Looks like it just cut out for a second there. I don't know what happened. Anyways, as I was saying, when in my hammock, I found it was very difficult to master being comfortable while reading a map or guidebook. That was one thing I really liked to do at the end of the day, just kind of get out the map and see how far I'd came, see how far I had left to go. And that was very difficult when you're kind of confined inside of your hammock. And it was also very difficult to jack off. Another thing that I like to do at the end of a long day of hiking is to stretch my legs, right? Just fucking lay out, relax, and <laughs> of course it's like healthy for your body to stretch at the end of a day like that, but I also just found that it was a good way to kind of unwind and kind of reflect on the day where I had hiked and all that stuff. And it's pretty difficult to do that in a hammock. You can like kind of do like a, like a freaking I, what is it called? IT band stretch, but Beyond that, like, you really can't do very much, and if you're in a tent, for instance, again, this isn't like a tents are better video, but it's just much easier to do that in a tent. So if you're camping with a hammock, you kind of have to just, like, do it on the ground, or, like, if there's a shelter, or, like, a picnic table you can lay on, you can do that, but it just makes it much more difficult. And, of course, if you want to, like, reorganize your gear, or really do anything else besides just kind of lay in the hammock, you're shit out of luck. It's, it's really not very easy in that confined space. So reason number two why sleeping in a hammock sucks, and this one's gonna depend on what kind of like sleeper you are, what positions you like to sleep in. It's pretty difficult to sleep on your stomach in a hammock. Now I generally sleep on my back or on my side, so this isn't too much of a problem for me, but honestly I kind of like to shuffle around during the night quite a bit and that is difficult when you're wrapped in that burrito that is your hammock. It's pretty obvious that sleeping on your back is like the go-to thing when you're sleeping in a hammock. I've found that I can sleep on both of my sides as well, although it does take like a little bit of squirming around and it's, it's not always the most comfortable thing if I don't get my hang exactly right. I would really be curious to know in the comments if anybody out there has like successfully been able to sleep on their stomach in a hammock. I'm sure somebody has, but from my experience and from just talking to people who like to sleep on their stomach, it's definitely a lot more difficult. Like I just picture it being kind of awkward, like you're like trying to lay face first in like a hammock. Like, I don't know, it just, it just seems like it really wouldn't work out that well. I haven't really tried it too much, but yeah, that's definitely something to keep in mind. If you are a stomach sleeper or you just like to like move around a lot during the night, like change positions while you're sleeping, that might be more difficult if you are sleeping in a hammock. So reason number three why sleeping in a hammock sucks 
is the underquill slash sleeping pad bottom insulation dilemma. So what I mean by that, in case you're not familiar, if you're a beginner to hammocks and all this stuff, you might think that you can just like get in the hammock without any sort of sleeping pad or bottom insulation and you'll be totally fine. And that's not really the case. You're, you're sleeping up above the ground. There's air underneath you just kind of brushing by your ass and... <laughs> What the fuck? It's, it's, it's colder, that's what I'm trying to say. And because of that, you pretty much have two options for bottom insulation. The first is an underquilt, which is basically like the bottom half of a sleeping bag that kind of goes like on the outside of your hammock and just kind of wraps you up or whatever. And the second option is just a sleeping pad, just a, a foam or even like an inflatable sleeping pad that you literally just lay on inside of your hammock. I know that seems like weird and seems like it might be uncomfortable and it kind of is honestly sometimes. The reason this is kind of an issue is because both of those different options have downsides to them. So I just a second ago basically said that the sleeping pads can kind of be like uncomfortable a little bit. Like once you find your position, it's, it's usually comfortable, but you kind of have to like squirm around. It's the end of the day and you kind of just want to pass out, but there you are like readjusting for like a minute or whatever to try to find that sweet spot and that's not super great. And then in terms of the underquilt, they're definitely more comfortable than the sleeping pad. I've used both underquilts and sleeping pads before. The downside with that, especially if you're hiking on like the Appalachian Trail, for instance, or another trail that has lean-tos and shelters, let's say the weather is really bad and you decide you want to sleep in the lean-to or shelter instead of in your hammock that night, if you only have an underquilt and you don't have a sleeping pad, then you're kind of shit out of luck. You either have to sleep in the shelter without anything underneath you, which is gonna be super uncomfortable, or you just have to suck it up and sleep in the rain, which isn't like the biggest deal. Obviously you're gonna be fine still, and, and I've done that plenty of times, but I just like having that option to stay in the shelter if I want to. And of course that begs the question, Kyle, why can't you just bring a sleeping pad and an underquilt? And the truth is folks, we all know the ultralight hiking gods would not be very pleased with me if I did that. Honestly, I that's really not an option for me. Like I'm too like much of a gram weenie, like weight conscious person to bring like two different items that both have the same purpose. I'm never gonna do that. So anyways, that's kind of like the overview of like the sleeping pad versus underquilt dilemma. And it is definitely something to consider if you are thinking of getting a hammock system. So reason number four why sleeping in a hammock sucks, and this is a this is a big one, honestly, this is a turnoff for a lot of people. This reason is that you can't really use the hammock on all different types of terrain. Now here on the East Coast where I live, I've never run into a circumstance where I couldn't set up my hammock, but I know for a fact that is definitely not the case when you go out west. For instance, I don't think you'll find many people who successfully through hike the PCT with a hammock. I mean, maybe somebody out there has done that. If that's you, then definitely leave a comment and let me know because that's honestly kind of hilarious. But for the most part, if you're looking for like a universal shelter system, if you're going to be planning hikes on the East Coast, the West Coast, maybe places overseas that don't necessarily have like trees all the time that you know you'll be able to set the hammock up in, you're pretty much gonna be forced to go with something other than a hammock. You could just buy a tent or whatever, tarp, whatever, and a hammock. You could have two different systems. I know that a lot of people, myself included, are on a budget and I don't really have like the money to get two different systems. So it's definitely really important to keep in mind that hammocks cannot be used on all different types of terrain. You're really gonna have to stick to like the East Coast stuff or an area where you know you're gonna have trees to hang that shit up in. So reason number five why hammock systems can suck sometimes, and honestly, I, I almost didn't include this one because it can actually be flipped around into like a, a positive of hammock systems, but it, but it, but it can also be a negative depending on how much backpacking experience you have. So anyways, this reason is that hammock systems aren't always necessarily beginner friendly. Now there definitely are some like all-in-one beginner friendly hammock systems out there. Hennessy Hammock makes a bunch of them. This isn't sponsored or anything, but I've used a number of their hammocks and they're really good stuff. So, so things like that do exist, but a lot of people like to kind of customize the shit out of their hammock setups. They like to have a different hammock body, a custom tarp, maybe like some special guy lines or like whoopee slings and all this stuff. There's a lot of terminology 
and see, I'm, I'm kind of proving my point already here. There's just a really big learning curve when it comes to hammocks that you don't necessarily get if you're just gonna buy like a tent. Some people are gonna look at this as like a positive, which makes sense because you can like customize everything and make sure you're getting like the best stuff for your specific backpacking needs, but it can just be overwhelming for a beginner. They have to research what all of these different things are, trying to learn about all these components and combine them into some sort of like cohesive system might be a lot and it might be a reason why you you would steer away from hammocks at first i know for a fact that this video might be a little bit controversial with some folks because again some people get like super defensive about hammocks and you know I, I get it like hammocks are dope don't get me wrong so if you have any thoughts on this video be sure to leave a comment smash like if it was helpful smash dislike if you're a jerk with that said folks end of the video i'm done see ya